Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are checking out the Cadillac ATS-V Coupe. This is a 3.6 liter V6, sending that uh, to the rear wheels and we've got 464 horsepower, 445 pound-feet of torque out of that twin turbo V6. up display so you don't really have to look down at the tachometer you've got your rpms up front you also have your speed now what kind of transmission is in this it's um eight speed pedal shift okay eight speed automatic yeah and do you put this over in order to get it into yeah. okay Is this the same 8-speed from the Corvette? It is. Okay, yeah, it's phenomenal. Phenomenally quick shifting uh, under acceleration. The upshifts are very quick. Now, are there different modes uh, for the throttle, or is that is this the set map that it's going to be in? No, there are different modes for the okay. throttle between tour sport and track. Okay. Um, tour, track has a much more linear application, actually. Okay. Um, so you can control it really well? be corner. very punchy right at the start. It, it, it is. The, the engineers actually designed the throttle arc to be very very linear because okay, yeah. it, same thing with the torque, how a lot of times when you come to turbocharged engines, the torque comes all at once. Right, you, know, you got a bang. Yeah. Right, and then it's huge flat plateau. They want it to be more natural feeling, especially when it comes to getting this car equipped with a manual transmission that you really get the most out of it and you really want to come through all the gears. Okay, that makes sense. Now, why did they choose to go with the twin turbo V6 rather than, you know, one of the LT or LS engines? A lot of people said, oh, why didn't they put the big V8 in it? You yeah. know, it's a Cadillac V8. like V8 roars. It needs it, <laughs> yeah. Um, we didn't like it. Um, they actually put the car, they put the engine in first and what they found was that it didn't give us the um, weight distribution numbers that we were looking for. The feel in order to have the car rotate mid-corner is very important to us because we wanted to make a track capable car. And what we found is that the twin turbo V6 engine, since it's a lot shorter than a V8, um, did a couple of things for us. One, we were able to push the engine, put the engine inside the front and push it all the way back toward the driver. Okay. So that you end up with a uh, front end, sort of front mid-engine setup. And, um, and then uh, it allowed us to meet all of our cooling requirements while still be able to um, meeting our power and torque requirements, our performance numbers for the engine. So we kind of got the best of all the worlds. Um, and it doesn't sound bad either, so. No, it doesn't. So when a lot of people are, are saying, hey, your car is the most fun to drive in the segment, there's more to give mid-corner, you know, without over-rotating the car. What they're feeling it are the benefits from having a V6 twin turbo engine, which is smaller than like a straight six or even a V8 because it sticks farther out the front. Yeah, I was just in, so I was just in the RCF before this, and it's a couple hundred pounds heavier uh, and less torque. And you know, this feels just as quiet on the inside, um, similar as far as the, you know, how nice this interior is. Uh, seems on par, but you've also got a little bit more oomph to it. It's, it can go a little bit quicker, less weight, more torque. And I like that about turbocharged engines. I mean, you can get into the torque a little bit earlier, uh, depending on how you, you know, design that turbocharger setup. So it, it feels phenomenal once, once you get your foot down. I, I don't know who else has this, but I know that we employ Bose Quiet Tuning in our vehicles. Okay. Um, something that the airline industry has been using for years in order to sort of beat out unwanted frequencies. Sure. Um, harsh noises, things like that. We're able to run, you know, the, the opposite frequency so that it negates some of that while giving people more of the noise that they want. You know, okay. That, that awesome So can you noise. can you uh, allow for engine noise with that, but, you know, try and eliminate tire noise, wind noise? Yeah, what it does is since you're able to eliminate wind noise, you're able to eliminate some of the tire noise, you're able to eliminate those other unwanted noises. Um, it sort of like opens up the lanes for the noise that you want to hear. That's pretty cool. <laughs> this 
this is how I usually merge. I just go really slow. <laughs> well, I knew that you wanted to get more room. <laughs> oh, you saw that coming. Yeah. Which is which is funny because of Viper ACR. I know they didn't. Yeah, they didn't fully take advantage of the horsepower. No, he really had. he really missed out on the opportunity there. <laughs> Now, does it also alter the steering weight with the different modes? It does. Okay. So it's just reducing the amount of uh, assistance, basically, as you get into the sport or track. Yeah, and um, we're really proud of the amount of feedback that the steering wheel gives, which is something that everybody's trying to shoot for when it comes to electrically assisted steering. Um, yeah. Ours is a ZF, just like, um, just like half the people out there. Yeah. But the real... I guess the real money comes into it when we get around engineers that can tune it. Yeah. As such. yeah, it seems solid. And I mean, honestly, like, you think, okay, yeah, it's a, it's a comfortable ride, but you do feel through the steering wheel. I mean, you do feel all these little bumps, uh, you know, so it, I can imagine, you know, when you're when you're going through a corner hard, you're probably going to get that feedback uh, of, of where the tires are as far as their limit. Um, that's something that a lot of journalists have been really praising us on, is, the, is our steering, and honestly, it all comes down to what's inside the engineer's head, and yeah. then how they are able to then um, turn what they feel when they drive the car into data so that we can change the, uh, the electric steering, and it's, it's, uh, it's cool to see that technology come far that much when you get to a lot of, a lot of different cars, you know, uh, crossovers for that matter, and yeah. you sort of feel over boosted and stuff. So, yeah, it has a good weight to it when you're when you're turning in. It seems pretty precise, seems to respond fairly quickly. So the other transmission option, is that a seven speed manual or is that a six? Six speed. Okay. It's the traffic TR6060. Okay. Um, great transmission. Able to carry all of that power. And I it. saw you guys have flat foot shifting in that? Yeah, no That's shift, awesome. which is really incredible. Are there any how, who else is there anybody else doing that? I just didn't know if that existed in production. I know they do tuning maps where you can get aftermarket setups that'll, that'll do it. I'm not sure if there's anybody else uh, I mean like it's it's available in Corvette, but I'm okay. not sure if there's any who else is doing it. I know no one else in our segment is doing it. I know that BMW doesn't offer it and I know there's Mercedes Benz. I've I've Mercedes never I've right. never done it. I was in a car that had a tune that allowed for it and it, it felt unnatural so I like I couldn't do it the first time. <laughs> I'm sure I would get used to it. Uh, especially if it was like a drag race or something like that, but yeah, you know, you're always used to lifting your foot. So. It, exactly, it was so funny when I gave it to Randy Popes, and he was like, "Huh?" <laughs> and then he was sitting there, and he was like, "I wonder how it's gonna work because I've been <laughs> I've been driving, you know, lifting yeah. for 30 years, and right. now I have to think differently." Yep. And he came back after the first lap, and he was like, "He was like, that was really something." He said, I want to play with that some more, so he took it back out again. He was like, "I really enjoy that." That's um, awesome. Yeah, it's it's really cool because it's. It's, it's yeah. We, we try to make it as easy as possible so we can to drive with the manual transmission. Yeah, it's much more. What has the now. downshift uh, rev matching? Exactly. Yeah. It's it, honestly, it's like the easiest transmission to learn how to drive stick on. Yeah. So um, <laughs> with with 464 horsepower, so it, no big deal. You got to, you got tons of power and torque. Um, so basically, you can just let off the clutch really easily at first, and put itself yeah. in the gear. Well, I am I am thrilled that uh, downshift rev matching is is becoming more common. Especially like if you're if you're going in between different cars and you're not used to it, where the pedals are and flipping the throttle, and you're always going to be off. Like a computer's going to do it better, uh, so it's it's phenomenal to have. I, I'm not up to the level of driving skill as like our race car driver, yeah. Johnny Cobb yeah, or exactly. Andy Pilgrim, you know. So um, whenever I get into one of our cars, it really helps me focus on yep. the, on the course yep. instead of like where to put my foot. Well, that's it's, exactly you know, it's so good these days that it's it's just bang on yep. precise. It's, no, it is, because I, so I drove a Corvette on a track, and it had that downshift rev matching, and it's like, there was too much to take in to be thinking about that also, so I was pretty thrilled that it had it. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.